Every day around 800 million vehicles consume 7 billion liters of fuel, making the gas stations around the world keep their tanks filled with this incredibly complex and potentially dangerous flammable liquid. Remind, we have a giveaway of a $100 value item of your choice for the first 1,000 subscribers. Hurry up and don't miss it. Have you ever wondered how gasoline is made? We visited the U.S. petroleum industry in Texas to discover how gasoline is made from crude oil. Texas is one of the most powerful places in the world for the oil industry, where drilling has been taking place since 1894. However, it was not until 1901 that the oil industry took off, when the extraction company tripled U.S. oil production with one stroke. Since then, almost 60 billion barrels of oil have been extracted from Texas, and if the oil companies have calculated well, there is a reserve of about 10 billion barrels that have not yet been extracted. Crude oil is not only the main fuel for transportation, but also provides us with 50% of the energy we need. Petrochemical derivatives are also basic for most everyday products such as plastics, asphalt, tires, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals. The sticky, smelly, and black liquid that they are looking for is crude oil, which is the raw material for gasoline production. Oil is found very deep in the ground, where tens of millions of years ago, plants and tiny marine creatures fell into the seabeds and were covered with food for centuries. The mass of organic material underwent a chemical transformation thanks to heat and pressure. 250 million years later, they have become one of the most important sources of energy in the world. This black gold smells like rotten eggs, but also smells like a lot of money. In Texas, they are starting their work of making a new well each month. More than 2,000 new wells are dug in Texas, and together, they extract more than 900,000 barrels of crude oil per day. The oil goes to the refinery, where it is modified to make gasoline, diesel, aviation fuel, and other products. Finding and extracting oil from the ground is only half the challenge. It is also necessary to reach the oil trapped inside rocks at a depth of up to 4,000 meters. To reach the oil, they use huge motors to make a large diamond tip drill sink into the ground. But the friction creates a lot of heat, and to cool the cutting head, water must be pumped constantly under pressure into the hole. The water then carries the debris to the surface in the form of mud. This is a noisy and very dangerous job because they have to ensure that the drill's pressure is correct. If it is too low, it will not cut, and if it is too high, it will break. There are also risks of gas emissions that could cause catastrophic explosions. While drilling, the team has to constantly add pieces of drilling pipe using a 5-ton automatic double wrench. As the drill makes its way at a rate of 5 meters per hour, this arduous task must be repeated every couple of hours, 24 hours a day. If they are lucky, they will find the oil. At first, the pressure of the trapped oil makes it pass through small holes into the pipe and rise to the surface. But this natural pressure does not last forever, so to keep the oil flowing, a piston pump is used for deep wells. The circular movement of the motor's flywheel is converted into a vertical motion. And, like a huge metal syringe, it sucks up oil to the surface. The fluid from each well comes out through a pipe, and the pipes from all the wells feed into a main line that leads to a gas elimination container. The fluid contains carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and natural gas that must be extracted. These pumps are used to collect Texas's black gold, but these oil fields are far from where the crude oil is needed. So a series of pumps are used to put it into a pipeline that will travel 1,000 kilometers to its destination. This is the largest oil refinery in the United States with over 8,000 kilometers of metal pipes covering 10 square kilometers. This plant can refine more than 562,000 barrels of crude oil per day.
The noise is so deafening that the plant's 4,000 workers use over a million ear protectors each year. This place is so large that not only does it process Texas crude oil, but it also refines oil from all over the world. Crude oil contains a mixture of hydrocarbons, each with a different number of carbon atoms. These hydrocarbons have different weights, with propane being the lightest, and the heaviest being used to make asphalt. The equipment removes and treats hydrogen sulfide, transforming it into sulfur that a local farm buys to use as fertilizer. After heating the crude oil to more than 370 degrees, it is pumped into the base of the tower and the vapor rises like boiling water. When it cools, the molecules condense with the heaviest asphalt sinking to the bottom. The lighter molecules, gasoline and kerosene, continue to rise until they also condense and can be extracted through a siphon. From every 191 barrels of crude oil, 88 liters of gasoline, 48 liters of diesel, about 26 liters of kerosene, almost 7 liters of propane, and 32 liters of other products such as lubricants and plastics are extracted. This plant produces enough gasoline for a car to make 770 round trips to the moon. The fuel is tested in an old engine that will verify its detonation capacity. Detonation in an engine occurs when the fuel ignites spontaneously. When compressed in the engine cylinder, the laboratory can then return the data obtained to the refinery to correct errors in the mixture and ensure that it is perfect. The time has come to open some valves so that the gasoline flows through underground pipelines to nearby terminals. From here, it goes to enormous tanker trucks. But filling a tanker truck is more dangerous than filling a car's gas tank. A failure in loading or unloading the truck could result in a serious explosion. A metal body can generate sparks due to static electricity, so the first thing to do is to lay a cable as a grounding and activate protection sensors against possible overfilling. A second pipe known as a vapor recovery pipe absorbs the emanated vapors to prevent them from dispersing into the atmosphere. Every day, about 4 million liters of gasoline are transported to gas stations. After pouring the gasoline into the huge tanks, it is ready for consumption. The next time you fill up your tank and think about how expensive the fuel is, remember the government and oil producers. Like the video and subscribe if you're enjoying our channel. We would be so gladful. Bye-bye.